Hi, this is going to be a look at the Star Wars Boba Fett Slave 1 by Hot Wheels Mattel. It's die cast and it includes the flight navigator. I've got this for a quid at Pound World in the UK and it looks pretty okay. I've got the uh, Black Series version so I can add some footage from that with this. Um, the Black Series version is really good, really small and detailed and uh, you know it's got like a clear glass and you can actually see Boba Fett inside it and it's got moving parts and bits and bobs so it's really a great model. I don't think this one's as good. I, I think I've seen reviews of this and it's you know it's been less than favourable but we'll take it out and have a look at it and you know make up our own form our own opinion as they say. Uh, Boba Fett Slave 1 also uses display stand, flight navigator, other ships you can get. Uh, really looks pretty decent. So let's get it out and have a look at it. I've got a Kenner version we can compare it with as well. Die cast. Alright, so let's get this out and have a look at it. Okay, this is the Slave 1, Boba Fett Slave 1 by Hot Wheels. And it's on its flight navigator has some okay paint detailing, it's sort of red around the sort of base, bit of khaki green here, black for the canopy, a bit more green up there, but the overall colours are sort of light grey, there's a lot of uh, weathering on the paint. These are plastic, they don't seem to rotate at all, which is a real shame. And the guns are fixed so this will be easily easy to convert into Django Fett slave one the underside's got a lot of detail though so it's not a bad little model but clearly the black series version is a lot better because it's got rotating fins and rotating lasers and you can actually see Boba Fett inside the canopy. So, also the Black Series has got two options for displaying your ship on the stand, so you can have it at an angle and have it like this as well. So, you got, I'll show you footage of that with this video as well. But it's not bad. I mean, it looks pretty decent for pounds. You can't complain, but. They could have done a bit more with it. These should have been rotating at least, these planes. So it's not bad. So we can focus a bit better. So it looks good from the top down view. Quite a nice looking ship, really. Titanium series number 10, the Slave One, Boba Fett Slave One. And I got it. At Argos. It was on sale for two pound forty-nine. Number ten there. There's a nice picture of the slave one there. European box. Looks quite nice. Let's have a better look at it. Okay. Here's the titanium black series. It's the Slave 1, number 10. You can see the lovely detail it has. This is a really good model because it has two ports, so you can stand it in a flying mode or in a sort of taking off mode. It's got rotating front cannons, or cannons at the bottom. It's got a tiny little Boba Fett figure. You can just about make him out there. And he's got rotating wings. You can just rotate like that. It's pretty cool. Nice paint decor on this. Really nice model. Slave 1 on the Empire Strikes Back. Nice paint apps on the ship. As the points of articulation would say, it's got nice panel lines, good paint apps. Looks really cool. This one's way better than the Hot Wheels version. 
which I don't have. I've got the Kenner vintage 1979, 80, I mean 1980 version to compare this with. But this is a really nice model. This is your Titanium Black Series number 10, Slave 1, which just looks amazing. Slave 1, so you can see that it looks pretty good overall. I mean, there's the underside has quite a bit of detail on the underside this bit's plastic the top bit's metal I think this is metal as well so it's not bad bigger than the Hot Wheels I mean the titanium as well or maybe the same size really two rivets underneath socket for the flight navigator not a bad model but inferior to the black series titanium cool little model die cast body plastic wings plastic guns plastic canopy lovely underside detail looks really good so that's just stave one with the Kenner die-cast Boba Fett slave one from about 1980. You can see it's a bit yellowed on that side, the plastic part. But you can actually see Boba Fett inside the cockpit. You can see the uh, rotating fins. And these guns move up and down as well. But they're kind of fragile, so you've got to be quite careful with them. So that's the Kenner version. And you can see the underside. It's got quite a bit of detail there. Made in Hong Kong. So this would have been Empire Strikes Back die cast, one of the last. There's the date, 1980 Lucasfilm Limited. And then you can see this one from the underside as well. For comparison. Size difference. side profile you can see that these rotate really they're quite loose whereas these are fixed okay so this is one worth checking out there's a Django Fett version that's number 27 that's pretty pricey in the UK but this is the, you can see the lovely paint apps and weathering on the ship. It's pretty cool. There's a Hot Wheels version, not bad. Has a fair weight to it, not heavy, but you know. Nice. Looks pretty cool. Yeah. So that's your Hot Wheels Black Series. Titanium Slave 1. You can mount the Slave 1 on its stand at an angle or flat. It looks really good at, at an angle. Looks nice. Cool looking model. And everyone loves Boba Fett. Really looks like an elephant head with the ears, the trunk. There's it on the stand. It's amazing. So that's your Black Series number 10, Slave 1. This has been released before. And then you can put it also flat. Here's the Slave 1 in the horizontal position. Looks amazing. Black Series Titanium number 10. It's pretty cool. So if you like Boba Fett or the Slave 1 design, this is one worth tracking down. There's also the J Django Fett Slave 1, which is a pretty cool model as well. Okay, so Slave 1, number 10, Black Series. All right, gets a thumbs up from me, certainly. All right, cheers. Bye. So overall, this is an okay model. The disappointing things with this model are that the fins here don't rotate, the lasers are fixed.
and that the canopy is just painted black rather than having an actual figure inside but you know I mean it does look the part it has some nice weathering and for a pound it's not too bad there's the ramp that lead where Boba Fett put Han Solo see the underside there it's got some good detailing on it and this is an iconic ship obviously because it's Boba Fett's ship it's going to be quite a popular design and model so it's one you might want to consider picking up if you can find it I got this for a quid at Pound World so if you go to Pound World in the UK you can pick these up pretty cheap um, yeah it's not too bad but it's not as good as the Black Series number 10 Boba Fett Slave 1 or the Django Fett which is number 27 but this one could easily be converted to uh, Django Fett Slave 1 by uh, Mattel and issued in the blue sort of colour scheme okay so that's Boba Fett Slave 1 have a nice look at the detail back end underside okay so that's Slave 1 alright cheers bye